52 Traders, episode 43. It's the ability to continue to think and perform under pressure. Over the next year, your host, Cam Hawkins, gets inside the minds of 52 of the world's best traders to find out if he has what it takes to become one of them. Join Cam every week on the 52 Traders podcast or at 52traders.com to learn how to trade like the pros. This podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only and is not investment, trading, or financial advice of any kind. Trading is very risky and could lose you all of your capital. Any comments about historical performance are not an indication of future results. Before we kick things off, remember to register for my free webinar where you can watch me turn simple trading strategies like the one you're about to hear on the show today into fully automatic MetaTrader 4 expert advisors all in less than 45 minutes and you get to keep whatever I create. You can register today at 52traders.com forward slash webinar or automatemytrading.com. What's up traders? Welcome to another weekly installment of the 52 Traders podcast and today we're lucky enough to have Chris Stanton and Jason Gerlich on the show. So Chris and Jason are from Sunrise Capital Partners, a hedge fund that's been around since the 1970s and today they're here to discuss their approach to quant trading and how it can be applied to the retail trader. Welcome guys, thanks for joining me here on the 52 Traders podcast this week. It's great to be here, thanks for having us. Okay, right, so uh, I've mentioned some of your highlights already, and I know that's only a small part of your story. So can you tell the listeners a bit more about you personally and what first attracted you both to trading? Uh, sure. I'll, I'll speak uh, on behalf of Sunrise, and then Chris, our CIO, who's here with me, can talk a bit about his trading background and what drew him to the space. Sunrise Capital Partners is a pioneering trading firm. We go back to the mid-'70s here in the San Diego area. We were founded by guys who were intellectually curious about how science and technology could be applied to markets and how better opportunities could be found for investors at a time when there weren't a lot of options. You know, the, the mid '70s through the early '80s, there wasn't there were, weren't many ways to invest your money. I mean, at that time, buying foreign stocks was considered exotic. So these guys just thought on a whole different level and felt that if you could take some concepts such as artificial intelligence. Um, you know, computer programs and apply them uh, to markets in a systematic way, you can come up with better outcomes. And that's exactly what they've achieved over the past uh, 30 plus years. I got involved here at Sunrise Capital about a decade ago and uh, just fell in love with the process and the challenges presented by what we did. And, um, you know, got so excited about the company that ultimately I became a partner here, and, and uh, Chris, uh, our CIO, who's sitting here with me, and I now um, own it with one of the original founders. Um, it's it's just something that you know, fires us up every day. Where we we enjoy what we do. The challenge of beating markets is great, and the challenge of spreading the gospel of what we do and encouraging others to come and invest with us is also a great one. And, and, and that's what kind of gets us up in the morning. So it's it's a lot of fun. Um, it is very challenging, but you know, there's really, in our view, no better business uh, in the world. Um, Chris can talk a little bit about he got how he got involved. So I've been a trader for 23 years. Um, I've traded in some very large institutions, um, and I got my start um, in a very large institution, J.P. Morgan, after uh, after uh, undergraduate, after my undergraduate work. Um, by way of background, I have an engineering and applied math degree uh, for undergraduate. And I think what I liked most about trading is, so you can start at a very high level and work your way down. At a very high level, it's unclear whether policy drives economics or economics drive policy globally. And therefore, being involved in trading or global markets, you're, you're effectively at the, at, 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 the, at the leading edge of what makes the world work, frankly, particularly as we've entered into, I'd say, the second phase um, of what's probably likely to be maybe many, many tens of phases uh, of, of global economic integration. So it's a really neat place to be. The intersection of economics and policy is, is a sharp one, as I said, and it's sort of a chicken or egg question. We know that, for example, here in the United States, you know, uh, presidential platforms are shaped in large part around economic outcome, right? You know, wealth redistribution or economic growth or improved job scenarios, things like that, because it is 
very, very local economics that affects the way people feel about their lives. Um, the nitty gritty of trading itself is interesting because it's kind of like a chess game integrated with um, a wrestling match. In essence, um, there's a, there's there's fatigue that that's very real when it comes to trading. Um, often that can evidence itself by being early to a trade, um, for example. But the idea is that you can untangle this problem. You can disaggregate the bigger the bigger picture, whether it's analyzing individual equity, it really doesn't matter because it's always going to, you're always going to start from a more holistic view, a top down approach, in essence, viewing whether you think, in the example of an equity, whether you think the, the larger global indices are in a, you know, a bull or bear market and, and which sectors are likely to perform and whether you're going long or short, you know, sort of selecting um, the right targets within that, or you're taking a more of a global macro approach and trading futures markets and speculating on currencies and interest rates and equity markets and things of that nature. So um, in there, it's ultimately your view that needs to be disaggregated and distilled down to a, <clears throat> a trade, which will net out against somebody else. So there's a competitive aspect to it, which I think is intriguing as well. Okay, so you mentioned uh, applied maths, and uh, would you consider yourself a quant? I would absolutely consider myself a quant. And it's interesting because, okay, so we are a quantitative hedge fund. I'll, I'll take a quick time out here and, and make sure that your listeners understand that. And, and, and when you think about the complexity of trading, the complexity of strategies, and if you were to scale them from 1 to 10, we are a 10. We are the most complex of trading strategies, and I'll unpack what that means later. But it doesn't mean that some of the principles that the central tenets that guide that complex strategy aren't usable in, in, in an individual and more simple way. It, ours has grown complex because it is a mature set of systems that have been developed over 36 years. And what we are trying to achieve in both obtaining geographic, market, time and systematic diversification is substantial given the substantial amount of assets we're investing. So that complexity is, is, is we believe, uh, to some extent necessary. Um, I am a quant at my base and I do believe that everybody is a secret quant because even if you're a discretionary trader, which is certainly the way I started my career, you will eventually revert to a set of basic rules. Right, you're going to come up with a an, an alchemy that works for you that enables you to make money, or you won't keep doing it. Um, and those that recipe, that rule book that one constructs over their career across their experience of trading, can be distilled and programmed into a computer and then used with with increasing discipline. And I'm sure what your what your listeners will find over time is. When they when they when they develop sound rules, when they develop sound risk um, policies, um, and and they follow them, they'll do well. And when they look at their worst days and their worst trades, they will find inevitably, I think, that it was a failure to follow one of those rules, a failure to adhere to a a, a process that you knew worked um, that led to that loss. And I suppose it's a, it's a case of, I mean, at the end of the day, even if you're disc discretionary, I mean, the, the calculations that are going on are probably just too complex to actually build into anything that could uh, could place trade your, trades automatically. So, so yeah, in essence, you're right. It, everything is it still can be distilled back to something that is quantitative in nature. Okay, so that was the first part of the show. Now, to hear the full episode, the best bits... Join the family at 52traders.com. They usually go for about 45 minutes to an hour long. And trust me, these shows are great. They give us so much insight. Now, if you want to get there quickly, all you need to do is jump into the show description on your phone, and there's a link taking you directly to 52traders.com, where you can join the family over there and listen to the full episode. Now, in the rest of the show, I cover off what my traders do differently from the rest of us. So what, are they, what is it that they're doing that we're not doing? What their typical trading day looks like, what they would do if they had a day job now and wanted to trade for a living. Their preferred trading strategy, so actually how does it work? What we should be educating ourselves on when we're looking at a price chart. So what indicators we should use, what price levels, what chart patterns, all those sorts of things. 
Also, we touch on fundamentals as well. So how do we use news to our advantage? Trading psychology, tips, tricks, techniques, we go through those. Exiting trades, managing trades that you've got running. So we talk about their strategies. They give you strategies for exiting and managing trades. Books to read, websites to visit, all the best ones. Something that you should try and master over the next month. The broker and platform they use. And finally, last but not least, they give us a full trading strategy. So something you guys can try out at home on your PC this week in the markets if you wish. Now, to get the full episode, you need to jump onto 52traders.com, join the family. As I said, it usually goes on for 45 minutes to an hour, and there's a link in the show description, so if you're on your phone, just jump on there, tap the link, and it'll take you straight to 52traders.com. Now, if you're thinking about learning to automate any of your trading, hiring a developer, learning to code, that sort of thing, then before you do that, jump onto my other website, automatemytrading.com. So if you're interested in automating some or all of your trading, then jump onto automatemytrading.com and you'll see me over there. For now, to hear the rest of this episode, all you need to do is click on the link in the show description or go to 52traders.com. See you there.